This episode brought to you by the Peppy Family Jonas Brothers Studios, museum quality taxidermy since 1908. Eastern Montana in the late fall. A beautiful place and a special time to hunt whitetails. What a morning. The sun's coming up. We're in this wide open area here in this river bottom, which is kind of a bummer because it's so wide open. We gotta get to these trees here, but we've got whitetails out in front of us here, just beyond these trees. It's nice and cold. They're in full rut. They're just, the bucks are just following doves. That's all they're doing. Nice. The timing is perfect. The weather is perfect. So hopefully we can get in there and rattle them in. What you're about to see, believe it or not, is actually free range whitetails in eastern Montana. We all know that whitetails lose some of their wariness during the rut, but this is ridiculous. First year of the morning, he's just not quite big enough. I need to keep moving and see what else is out here. I hope I don't regret walking away from that deer. That's a dandy. What a start. Is there anything cooler than doing the sneaky sneak on a whitetail buck? This is one of the few places in all of North America where you can spot and stalk big whitetails. You're not having to sit in a tree stand. You're not having to try and bait them in or anything like that. You can just hunt them the good old fashioned way, spot and stalk. Everything about Eastern Montana is about water. Without these rivers, this would be bare desert. You get a little bit of rain, but you can tell by the terrain with these cottonwoods and this dry grass that these rivers like the powder are the lifeblood of this area. They use some of it for irrigation, obviously for watering the cattle and the deer. This is it. You can see all these trails where they've run down here, coming down to get water. Even as it's freezing up, they found these pockets right here where they can get down and still hit this open water. It won't be long and this will be completely froze over. But this is perfect conditions for whitetail hunting. My hunting technique here is to keep moving along the river bottom, slip through the trees, and constantly glass and stay alert. If I see something worthwhile, I'll stop and rattle, see if I can get him to come in closer, get a good look at him. There's three bucks. They're two of them are just super wide. The one looks like he's real tall. I don't think he's that first one we saw. 
Let's just go straight at them and see. We'll just cut through these cottonwoods. And, come on. I think the wide one's gonna go high 50s. That's all? That's what I would Oh, the wide one. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, just because just he doesn't have any points. If you, depending on his mass, yeah. you know, he might touch uh, low 60s. That, that tall one's coming this way now. Not much on fours though on that one. On the tall one. Mm -hmm. I'm still leaning toward that wide one, man. Big body, wide, really good brow tines. I think that tall one might score better, just because the number of tines. But he's nowhere near the, you know, cool. <laughs> I know that some bitch is awesome, man. Parker was right. That big wide one was a dandy. But it's day one. We might as well keep looking. And we haven't scared him away. Hopefully he'll still be there if we gotta come back. That's some bitch right there's got some mass on him. He's walking, one walking to the left. He comes up super tall and he's got big mass. This deer here, I'll eat my hat if I'm wrong, but this deer has got to be the same genetic. If it's not the son, he's definitely the cousin of that one we killed last year. That one that was real tall and had the massive horn on the top where it was all palmated. When I climbed up on top of him, it gave me a clear shot of the deer took the sagebrush out of the way and the grass that was between me and them. It was perfect. Okay, just come to a stop there, baby. There was no ground shrinkage today on Rugged Expeditions, I can tell you that. What a deer, huh? This one here is his son, for sure. He comes up exactly the same frame. He doesn't have the oddball uh, cheater that was going off on that last one last year, but this is a really outstanding, massive tops and great length on the tines. Stay down there, buddy. Stay down there. One close. In eastern Montana, do you get out here and see buck after buck in full rut? I mean, we've had that big wide one, we've had that real tall one, and walking away from that big wide one, that was about all I could stand. I mean, that was a dandy, dandy buck that, you know, I'd be really happy with. But we had him out in that field, I thought, well, if we don't see anything bigger, we can always come back later today, hopefully, or tomorrow morning, 
and get them, but it's, it's insane. I mean, we came in here, we're basically wide open in these cottonwoods, but there's little bits of dip, and I got down snuck a little bit, but that big bugger was following that doe, and he didn't care. I mean, at 43 yards, a white-tailed deer doesn't care, and a monster. I'm, I'm speechless. I can't wait to see this thing up close. Oh my goodness. Look at this. My biggest and best whitetail ever. Holy smokes. Look at this thing. Look at the mass. Look at this up here. The is oh his brow tines are bladed. Sweet. Got a couple cheaters over here. This one's kind of broken off or something. Got one over here. Nice old deer. Great length. Look at the height on him, huh? That's what was so impressive when he was walking through those woods and he turned like that right at the last minute. Whew. My goodness. What a deer. Thanks, buddy. What a great morning out here in eastern Montana. Perkins Outfitting puts on another show for us that's incredible. I mean, I don't know where else you can come and spot and stalk wild whitetails. I love this place, and there's the reason why. Look at that deer, huh? <laughs>